I guess I want to start with just the overall state of AI, uh, because from traditional market watchers perspective, AI seems to be in a bubble. Bank of America strategist Michael Hartnett says tech is forming a bubble and AI in particular is in a baby bubble. Bubbles start with easy money. They end with rate hikes. How much do you agree with that? You know, I think I think in some ways I do agree with it. I think that there's a kind of vacuum of conviction and areas to spend time in on the investor side today after kind of a, a very crazy past few years um, and, you know, things cycling in and out of the zeitgeist like crypto, for an example. Um, I do think that unlike a lot of prior areas, there will be massive disruption and there is so much ROI that can happen um, with a ton of different industries. And I think for the first time, um, people can see it and feel it in a way that is very tangible to their day-to-day -day lives. And so that creates some sort of compounding effect of um, the kind of zeitgeist in the moment and, and how big it feels. Because at every dinner, at every interaction, someone is talking about AI, someone's talking about the ethics of it, et cetera. Michael, I used to cover tech deals, and, and some of this vibe kind of throws me back to when Airbnb, Uber were doing their massive funding rounds around some consumer tech when they were still private. A lot of that was driven by folks like yourself, but also bigger investors, growth money, private equity firms piling in. Is that kind of money already moving into this market? Do you think that that will fuel some of this potential for bubble that you're talking about? It's starting to. I think more and more people are trying to figure out what are the areas in which they can, you know, properly deploy hundreds of millions of dollars. And you see that on the foundation model side of things in the larger AI labs. And I think you're going to start to see it on the more application layer and middleware side of things. And so it's it's definitely starting. We're seeing it now with the full stack, kind of larger scale VC firms, some of the growth firms. And then obviously on the hedge fund side, as we're seeing on public markets, people are trying to figure out outside of NVIDIA, what are the plays that they should be having to get exposure to things that feel quite asymmetric um, from an upside perspective and just incredibly large scale if it does work, which is kind of our job. Michael, I'm curious about your investment portfolio. How much of it centers on AI? Is it less than half, more than two thirds? And when, when we talk about centered on AI, are these companies that started with the um, goal of entering and building out AI or have they pivoted to AI or, and expanded to AI from where they started? Yeah, so we've been investing in AI or ML as we used to call it since 2014. And I think probably about 60% of our portfolio falls within that area now. And that's because AI moved from a very kind of vertical specific um, misnomer to now being a horizontal platform. And so everything from biology companies using AI um, to kind of do more of a search and discover instead of a random walk in discovery to um, core companies like Runway ML, Wave.ai, that are doing kind of full stack, building their own models, using it in very unique ways. Uh, and so I, I think for us, we view ourselves as very AI native investors and think that most of how we like to invest is companies that either have a unique take on product as it's enabled by the bleeding edge of AI or are building and kind of pushing that bleeding edge into their core category. Let's talk regulatory risk or appetite for regulation from some of your portfolio companies. Which side of that debate are you falling on? Where do you think in the U.S. in particular our government should be getting in and kind of laying out the guardrails for what this industry's impact could be on consumers, on businesses, and on tech writ large? Yes, yeah, so I watched the entire hearing last week, and I think generally everyone did a really incredible job. Um, Sam, obviously, is the one who uh, got the most praise for his embrace of regulation. I think he made a very strong point, which I agree with, which is that on the startup side, and really even the mid-sized company side, I don't think regulation should come into play um, just yet. I think there's all sorts of ethical dilemmas to discuss around how to use different types of training data, what data you can train on, how do you get opt-in, et cetera. But I think a lot of our companies are taking an approach of making sure they're doing things responsibly and making sure that they're doing things transparently. And I think it's a little too early to be trying to put into effect things that could hamstring development, especially in the United States, because I do think this is some form of an existential technology. And we want to make sure we're continually pushing the frontier of that. And while there are certain areas um, like these large models and kind of frontier models that could have regulation at the compute layer. I think more and more as people start to get better at miniaturizing models, doing things locally, it's gonna become really difficult. And I'm not sure on the government side, we yet have a understanding or a group of people with enough understanding to properly regulate something that is so important and mm. um, honestly is moving so quickly. Our previous guest, Sarah Krebs of the Cornell Tech Policy Institute, was just saying that uh, the onus really falls on the firms themselves uh, to propose regulation or to try to set up their own guardrails. To that end, 
Is there anyone that you've encountered, that you've engaged with, who you believe is a leader in, in thinking through some of these issues that you think people need to be paying attention to? To be honest, I think it's most of the people who are running these large, uh, these large labs, whether it's kind of people like Sam. I think Gary Marcus made some really good points as a professor in the hearing. I think there are people that are trying to take um, ethical approaches. The team at Runway cares a lot about making sure they work with creators. Um, but I think, you know, to Sam's point, you know, these people have day jobs that are you know, probably the most exciting they've ever been mm. and something they view as kind of their life's work. So I do think it's hard. I think more and more as more people who have uh, been at large organizations and seen regulation in other lines of technology start to really dig into AI, we will start to have people rise naturally. Right. But to be honest, right now, most of the people are those who have the depth of understanding of, of knowing how quickly this moves and the scale at which it's moving. And those people are building right now.